Of the 3,632 hours of skiing that I did prior to the 11th Olympic Games in Sapporo, Japan, 60% of it was done on about 200 feet of Nose Hill under Northmont Boulevard. On the farm, I had to be up by four, and so in the city, it was easy to get up and make my way to the ski hill under the streetlights. I realized if I was going to make it to the Olympics in six and a half years, weekend skiing was never going to cut it when you only get 42 to 48 minutes a day on a ski hill. It was never going to be enough. I attended Colonel Irvin Junior High, which was about 150 meters from my ski hill, and so I would ski till the bell rung and then stuff my skis and poles under the bridge and go to school. Lunchtime back skiing and then after school skiing again till my mother picked me up to take me home for supper. The training served multiple purposes. Fitness in climbing, power in skating and pushing, technique in running gates, mental toughness and emotional balance of energy and output. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter and you're listening to 831 Living Your Best Life podcast where we inspire participation, communicate precision and empower performers to podium. And I hope you will tell everybody you meet to go to their favorite podcast provider or junglejimhunter.com or YouTube and subscribe, download, click on like, rate and review us and become an 831er. Someone that lives their best life because you are inspired by this podcast and as a result, become a first responder and inspire others to live their best life. Well, the Olympic Games are about to start and it'll be 31 days to the 16th Paralympic Games. But we'll talk about that after these games are over. My thinking was simple. You turn left and right, two link turns. Add enough space that you could link 10 to 20 of them together and you can learn how to ski. Getting up to speed is climbing a little bit higher and being at speed when you hit the first gate. One day when I came into the school, my homeroom teacher asked us to come prepared the next week to give a report to the class of what we wanted to do with our lives. I told of my plan to become an Olympic ski medalist. The class laughed. They made fun of me and thought it was a joke because I was still the slowest kid in the class because I was recovering from my accident at 10. The homeroom teacher shared it in the teacher's lounge, and Larry Chase, the phys ed teacher, checked me out. He wanted to see if I skied under the streetlights. He wanted to know if I was really a man of my word. One day I came into school, and on my desk was a hardback book called The Greatest Challenge. An overwhelming wave of emotion went through me as I looked through it. There was no name on it, and I wanted to keep it. And for a moment, I thought of just putting it in my locker and not tell anyone. I had been taught better, and I looked through every page and found the Alpine section. There was a picture of the men's team. I gave it to the homeroom's teacher, and I said, Ah, somebody must have left this on the desk. She looked at me and said, It must be to the library. Take it to the library. So I walked by my locker, thought again. Hmm, maybe I could just keep it and then carried on. I handed it to the librarian, and she looked through it and said, Not ours. Take it to the office. I walked by my locker again and went to the office. I gave it to the principal. I told him what I'd done, and he said, I'll check around, and if no one claims it by 5 p.m., you can claim it. Wow, I had a tough time concentrating at school that day. At lunch, when I went skiing, I could hardly think about skiing. And I was learning a great lesson about what you think about when you are doing what you love to do and something else is on your mind. After school, I went back skiing and right at 4.50 p.m., I packed up my ski gear and ran the 150 meters to the school. I asked the principal and he came out and handed me the book. It's yours, he said. That night, I memorized the names of the Canadian men's team and their results. Those names meant so much to me. Peter Duncan, Gary Battistella, Jean-Guy Brunet, and Roddy Hebron, Nancy Cree, Nancy Holland, Karen Docker, and Linda Crutchfield. Years later, I found out that Larry Chase noticed the abuse I took for expressing my dream, and yet he saw the evidence of my commitment. He wanted to test me and see if I was just a character playing a role or an athlete that had character. I had not demonstrated anything to him that I was going to be a great athlete up to that point, but he followed me and watched me as I carried the book to the library and to the office and noticed the commitment I made every day. He had purchased the book and placed it on the desk and asked for the cooperation of the homeroom teacher, the librarian, and the principal. Years later, I asked Jack Gotta, coach of the Calgary Stampeders, if I could run the stairs at McMahon Stadium. Jack said, yes, and you should thank our trainer, Larry Chase. Why, I asked. He told me what Larry had done. And by the way, Jungle, why run the stairs at McMahon Stadium? I said, my goal is to lift one million pounds in an hour. And I can do that if I run enough stairs, lifting my body weight up to the top and back down again. 
I still have that book and I still use that measurement of being able to lift a million pounds in an hour. I looked at it every day. It's dog-eared now and it's faded. But when I stepped into the speed skating oval at the 11th Olympic Games in Sapporo, I stepped into the cover of the book. It was what I dreamt about every day. It was what I looked at a thousand times a day if I looked at it once. The front cover is a picture of the opening ceremonies in the Innsbruck, Austria 1964 Games from the 9th Olympic Winter Games. And the same arena I would step into at the 12th Olympic Winter Games in 1976. As we walked into the stadium, I thought of the students, like David Epson, who was a school bully that one day when I was skiing, picked up my bike off the bridge and walked to the center of the bridge and yelled, Hey, loser, let's see if your bike can fly. And he dropped it. The bike broke in the cold in half, and I had to get another one. I thought of the kids that laughed when I told them I would be a medalist at the Olympic Games. All that was left after the opening ceremonies was the races. The next 14 days would test me and prove to me that I could live my best life ever. What I said I was going to do, I could do. The games are about to begin. Only 1% of the athletes there will win a gold medal. However, all the athletes that are there have a story to tell about what they had to grow through and go through to overcome the obstacles that stood in their way. And they live in a place and a time that they have focused on for years and years. And we can learn from them and live our best life ever. Thank you for listening. I hope you will have grown and will be living your best life the next time we meet. My quote for the day, one kind thing is testing someone's character to see if they have it or if they are a character.